Half-Life 2 RTX has been met to some pretty negative reception, some thinking the volumetrics are too overdone, others thinking it's too bright and so on. Instead of outright dismissing one of the largest community-made mods of all time, simply dial back the things you don't like with a slider or two. I took a dive into the RTX developer menus to see if I could fix these things for you. So I pointed out in my first video about this how long it takes for the volumetrics to update once the light source has been covered over. This is determined by this slider, which by default is set to 128. Set it down to 1 and… well, you can see what happens. But good news, the volumetrics will now update in real time. The higher the slider, the more stable they look. 32 is a good one to start at, though you can get down to about 16 before it becomes obviously flickery. Or you can just not go into noclip to obstruct this light source. Before we do away with these volumetrics entirely, let's take a moment to dial them up even further. There's a bunch of very atmospheric looking volumetric presets, like heavy fog, which is very foggy, haze, which is very hazy, and smoke, which is very smoky. All of these alter the ambience in varying degrees, and you can also add dust motes to the scene. And these are quite configurable so that you can make them look more like falling snow or like embers or whatnot. But okay, I get it, you hate volumetrics. So just set the Froxel max distance to zero to do away with all this stuff. There, no more god rays. You can tone it down even further by disabling some of these atmospheric lighting settings just here. What is kind of cool though is to set the atmospheric settings so that you're up in space and that the sky is pitch black which really adds to the eerie, otherworldly tone if that's what you're going for. While we're going full horror, take a gander over to the indirect illumination, then go to Neural Radiance Cache and set the max expected average radiance to NORP. This restricts how much lighting will bounce about the place, returning the shadows back down to blackness again, requiring you to use your torch to light up various areas of this map. Anyone who's played Counter-Strike 2 will know that Source 2, and, and indeed, RTX bounces light around a lot more than Source 1 used to, which is what Ravenholm was based on. So these custom tweaks will help return the ambiance back down to how it looks in Half-Life 2, combining the best of both worlds, the limited bounce lighting of the original game with the slowdown of path tracing. Congratulations. I'll be honest, having grown up in the era where a large part of PC gaming was in modding and in customising games, seeing so many people being so quick to outright dismiss this mod because they don't like a singular, very configurable aspect of it is quite sad. This is the sort of high quality, passion driven, community driven content that the community should be encouraging. So instead, just twiddle with these options, find what you like and use that instead, or if you don't like it, just don't use it. But before you say this isn't how Ravenholm is meant to look, well firstly it's a graphical mod, it isn't meant to look exactly like the original, and second, Valve later went on to make Half-Life Alex, a game with lots of volumetric effects and bounce lighting, so I imagine such effects would have been used had they been available at the time. One last thing that's fun to do, but certainly not how Ravenholm would have been done at the time, is to turn the night into day. Open the game's console, type fog UI, and set these options to something like this. Negative fog distance seems to behave almost like daytime lighting, plunging the dark, unpleasant streets into a rather pleasant looking early morning scene. Beautiful. Book your holidays to Ravenholm now while stocks last.